ETFs or exchange traded funds are investment securities that seek to track a specific index or segment of the financial market, such as large company stocks or bonds. In other words, an ETF is a basket made up of underlying securities, such as stocks or bonds, that in most cases are trying to match the performance of a specific passive benchmark. An example of an ETF is IVV. That's a ticker symbol. It stands for the iShares S&P 500 Index ETF. IVV is trying to replicate the performance of the S&P 500 Index, which is an index comprised of the 500 largest U.S. stocks. How does IVV do that? Well, by owning the same 500 stocks in the S&P 500 Index in their proportional weight. Before the first ETF was launched in 1993, investors that wanted to passively invest in specific segments of the market were limited to index mutual funds. Now, the biggest difference between an ETF and an index mutual fund is ETFs trade throughout the day on an exchange, just like stocks, while mutual funds only trade after the financial markets close for the day. Like anything that trades all day, ETF prices are constantly fluctuating based on the supply and demand for the ETF in terms of buys and sells. What that means is, is the market price of the ETF can deviate from the collective value of the underlying securities the ETF owns. What does that mean? Well, think of an ETF as a basket of fruit that is being bid up and down in price all day. Meanwhile, the individual prices of the apples, bananas, and pears are also being bid up and down separately. All that trading in the individual fruits, as well as the basket as a whole, could mean the collective value of adding up all the individual fruit prices that comprise the basket could differ from the price of the overall fruit basket. With ETFs, the collective value of the individual fruits is called the net asset value, except instead of fruits, the ETFs own stocks, bonds, and other securities. In order to limit the, to the extent to which an ETF's market price differs from its net asset value, the ETF sponsor publishes the net asset value every 15 to 60 seconds throughout the trading day. In other words, the ETF sponsor is calling out the, to the market, here's the correct value of the ETF. Then traders can compare the announced value with what the ETF is selling for in the open market. If there's a discrepancy between the ETF's net asset value and its market price, investors can buy or sell short the ETF, while at the same time buying or selling short the underlying securities held by the ETF. Selling short means investors profit when the securities fall in price. This gives these investors the opportunity to earn an essentially risk-free profit by taking advantage of price discrepancies between the, the ETF market price and its net asset value. And that risk-free profit opportunity essentially means that there's very much a tiny discrepancy between the ETF price and its net asset value in a normal market environment. Now, ETFs differ from index mutual funds in how new shares are created. An index mutual fund sponsor creates or redeems shares at the end of the day, trading day based on that day's buys and sell orders. ETF sponsors create and redeem shares throughout the trading day, as well as at the end of the day, as it works closely with institutional traders called authorized participants. Each day, the ETF publish a list of securities and their weights, and these are called the creation basket that represent the securities held by the exchange traded fund. And new, TF, new ETF shares are created when the ETF sponsors transfer shares to an authorized participant in exchange for a basket of securities that approximates the creation basket. So in other words, as an authorized participant could go out into the market and buy all the stocks that comprise the ETF and then exchange it for shares in that ETF. Or they could take shares in the ETF and exchange it for a basket of securities. And, and this, this transaction not only keeps the price in line, the net asset value in line with the market price, but it also allows for the creation of new shares. Now, all that trading to create new ETF shares and keep the ETF price in line with the value of its underlying holdings, its net asset value, means there is a lot of trading in stocks, ETFs, that has nothing to do with the stock or ETF's future prospects. In other words, these are just trading to keep the price in line. And what that means is a lot of price movements or volatility for both ETFs and the underlying securities. For example, in 2015, the S&P 500 Spider ETF 
had a turnover of 3,000%. So all that turnover trading in that ETF and the underlying stocks related to just trying to keep the right price of the ETF. And all that underlying activity can lead to flash crashes like occurred in May 2010 and again August 2015 where the price of ETFs plummeted at the opening. Now eventually the prices got in line, but it was, it was some ferocious selling. For example, I remember that day seeing the iShares S&P 500 ETF fall by over 20% in the opening minutes. So the bottom line is while ETFs appear straightforward and easy to use, there's a great deal of underlying complexity lurking be beneath the surface. So these complex environments can be highly unpredictable as we saw in these flash crashes of May 2010 and August 2015. So what should you do? Well, one, you can own an index mutual fund instead of an ETF. But if you want to own ETFs, never buy or sell an ETF at the market price. Always use what's called a limit order, where you state what you're willing to either buy the ETF at or sell the ETF at. A market order is where the broker just gives you whatever available price is. And if there's a flash crash, you could get hurt. So you should always specify in terms of a limit order what you're willing to buy or sell that ETF for. Hey, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below. If you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments. Thanks.